everybody. Hello. Yeah. Hi, my name is Dr. Fikri Arjaman. I am from Dubai Foundation and Women Children. I am a psychologist, sorry, I used to be psychological service manager. Just recently has been changed to training and development manager. So today I'll be presenting about uh, the FWAG Foundation for Women and Children as a model for effort and child protection. And I'm going to be giving you a general idea about our services in terms of what we provide in terms of the community awareness as well as, well as our, uh, you know, working with the clients. Uh, I just want to know how many of you guys have been uh, or have heard about uh, our place. So almost three, four people. Okay, because yeah, today while I was sitting in our booth, we had like lots of people, they were asking about our foundation. And I will be presenting at the beginning and I will open a little bit more of a discussion, you know, at the end. I think that's better. Is that fine with everybody? Any questions before we start? Okay. Uh, okay, this is going to be, I'm going to be, um, you know, covering these areas, which is the general information about the FWAC and the DFWAC strategy, the admission policy and the FWAC services and community awareness program. And actually today one of my colleagues was supposed to, hear, to be here with me to be presenting about community awareness. Unfortunately, she got sick, so I'm going to be covering her area as well. So I am hope I'm not going to be, you know, uh, missing something, but I... Uh, Overall, I'm not, I think. So anyway, Dubai Foundation for Women and Children, uh, actually, it was the first licensed nonprofit shelter in the UAE for women and children who are victim of domestic violence, child abuse, and human trafficking. It was established in 2007 and to offer victim immediate protection and support service in accordance with international human rights and obligation. So basically, we, are, we cover these three areas, which is domestic violence and child abuse and human trafficking. It was a non-profit organization which was developed and, uh, in 2007 by Sheikh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid in order to provide support for such uh, people. Okay, our vision. Our vision is like to, uh, to be a community free from violence and abuse when we meet as well as adults and children. Our mission is the Dubai Foundation. I'm not going to be repeating the Dubai Foundation, you know, the FOC, but that's the, you know, the abbreviation we use usually, which is our aim is to alleviate the violence against women and children through protection and prevention and promotion. What do we mean protection? We protect all different kinds of abuse, including physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, um, uh, neglect, and emotional abuse and psychological abuse. And actually this was supposed to be, and also we prevent an ongoing abuse and escalation of violence through the family members as well as like school, any area we are being able to provide such services. In addition to that, we promote social awareness through education and outreach. I'm gonna be covering that a little bit more later in terms of like what overall, you know, services we provide in the community. Uh, oops. Back to that one. The DFWAG strategy, we provide shelter services and social and psychological care for women who are exposed to violence. We are a 24-hour shelter, which we have an in-home services for people who do need immediate service, and they have a location where they can provide food, services, psychological, um, social worker, and we have like legal services as well, and we have a small like villa for children, which we provide services for such children who have been in immediate danger, uh, danger as long as, um, you know, in a long uh, procedure. As well as, in addition to that, we do the family empowerment and strengthening ties together. What do we mean by that? Sometimes, you know, the family, they come together as a parents as well as children. In addition, sometimes we have the parents by themselves without their family member. And we do work with the family as a group and as well as children if they need it. And sometimes we offer services for only women alone. People who are needed, they need services internally as a shelter we do, that's internal clients, and we have also external clients as well. So that's why our services, like, you know, it differentiate between people who are really needing immediate service versus people who are needing a long service outside the foundation. In addition to that, we promote the collective work amongst one local parties, organization, and unions to secure the smooth and effective service. What do we mean by that? 
We are in conjunction with other organizations, like for example, such as today with KHDA, you know, we, have, we are in contact. The community awareness program, those are the people who provide that service. They're always in contact with consulate, with organization, with the, any government agency, as well as private agency in order to provide services. So they come through community awareness in order for us to be contacted to them to offer the services, which I'm gonna be again, uh, you know, cover that later. We built a, collab a collaboration with local international parties and all involved in the protection of basic principles of human rights. Mostly why we focus, because that was the first thing we began with working with human rights. Probably a lot of you have seen in the newspaper, it's about, about human trafficking. The number of the human tra trafficking, when we opened the foundation in 2007, it was really much higher than now. So that's why we are working with the police department with the human rights and also an international obligation of rights to protect the women and children. In addition, also with the Ministry of Interior, uh, you know, press. we work together as a colleague in order how to prevent such issue because we have a lot of cases which come through internationally here in Dubai and we work with the agencies, even with the consulate, to return them back to their home. And we develop, uh, we also develop a research and reverse social issues that will inform program and policy development. Probably some of you guys might have been stopped by our booth today. You know, that I didn't have an idea about what was going. We developed this research related to child abuse and domestic violence. And also we have a statistic about how the rate of psychological issue among this population has been raised or decreased among this time. And in addition to that, we also have some publication. We have worked in child abuse, uh, you know, um, um, I think last year it was done with a congestion with the University of UAE. And also right now we are working with the second phase. So we have an ongoing services in terms of research and sometimes you also have obligation with the, we, you know, we have uh, students, I mean, sorry, students who are coming as an interns to help us to, you know, to implement such things and as well as to provide them with such area in order to have more knowledge about what do we need from the school to be involved in this area. In addition, a lot of our staff also, they go abroad to US, to, you know, to Geneva, to everywhere in order to see what is the recent research regarding the such issues. And we promote community awareness, which I talked a little bit, to reduce all forms of abuse, which we talked about before this. Okay, the admission policy. Now we're gonna talk about the admission policy. In, our, in accordance with our mandate, we offer services to women and children victims who are defined by law 15, 2007. As I said, in 2007, that was the Dubai Foundation which was established. And then uh, the service provision which was defined by law. So right now we are protected by law according to what services we are gonna be offering to such people. The admission criteria. Uh, you know, we said Dubai Foundation for Women and Children, and now we do not mean like we are not going to provide services for the male because we have, I have had lots of time when people are, you know, come in a way of also attacking us, you know, in the presentation. How about men? So we do have some male, uh, you know, clients. In the past, which it was open, it was only for women and children because, you know, it was a social awareness. But gradually, as we started right now, we have working, we have been working with families. Also, the male are part of the group. We work with the children, and sometimes the women are not involved. The fathers are involved. So it depends who has the custody of the children. And that's also again, again, according to the legal you know, department. And also, and people who are not in immediate danger for harming themselves. What we need, what we mean by this, about homicide and suicide, people who are in immediate danger, who are trying to hurt themselves and others, we try to refer them to the hospital because we do not have a facility for that. Although I'm a psychologist, I'm a licensed psychologist in US also, and I can work with such population, but when we have a client, we do not exclude it. To be honest with you, we do a screening in such cases which we don't know, and we see what is the history of the client. Are they really intended to harm themselves? In such cases, we refer them to the psychiatric hospital to get the services and they can back to, come back to us when they are not in immediate danger. Any question? Okay, I heard somebody. Okay, in terms of not infected by contagious disease, the reason for that, because we are working with the human uh, trafficking population, 
those populations are really infected by a lot of disease. So we are trying as a shelter, which we are trying to be a safe place, to be protected from such disease. And that's why we're gonna have a nurse in, you know, in the shelter, and they are usually accompanying the client uh, or the, you know, uh, the patient to the hospital and to see if, if they are infected. And usually when they come at night, after hours, we have people on call. They can accept the client and we do the procedure because they, we have even after hours, the house mothers are usually taking care and they're also in contact with us as a team. We mean case manager, psychologist, the care and rehab director, and also other parties are involved. And uh, not made of 12 years or over. What we mean by that? We accept any ages except male who are above 12, only boys, because we do not have a place for that. But in the future, we are planning to go toward that direction. Because right now, we have uh, a small area which is for male. So although we said it's not for male, we had accepted client in the past because we do not want to abandon any client and also to do any discrimination about the client regarding of their age and ethnicity. So, what I'm talking about here, we are accepting any clients regarding of race, ethnicity, religion, anything, income, anything. We do provide full services. Any question? Okay. Case admission and procedures. About the procedure here, when the clients come in, they got client accepted. Now admission, most of the time we have in the morning services as well as in the afternoon. Even 24 hours we have a helpline. They get a call and they can transfer the client even at three o'clock in the a.m. So we have that 24 hour services. They call the person on, uh, on charge and they transfer them to the, the flock. And after we get accepted the client, we do the orientation. Now let's talk about this. Let's just assume, you know, it's probably it's gonna be more clear if we are talking about somebody who came in the morning, for example, and this procedure going with any direction. So first we give them an orientation about the DFWAC. What is the services we provided? What is our policy and the rights of the client? And then we have an informed consent. Everything they sign, they will get admitted to the foundation. Then we do intake. Usually it takes one to two days. We do not take a long time about admitting because as soon as we meet the client, we want to be sure what service we can provide them because we, some of them are really an immediate danger. So that's why we are trying to do, develop a safety plan for them. Then. We set up a weekly appointment with the counselor. Although we have a weekly appointment with the counselor, that does not mean like they cannot meet the counselor any day. We have an open door policy. They can come in the morning, they say there's some crisis happened, they're crying because they miss their family, they're upset, their children, with their children in the foundation. So that's why we accept them because we have a small villa for, for children, we have a building for human trafficking and one for domestic violence. For domestic violence, they are usually the inmates where their children, with their children, I mean. And then after we set up a weekly appointment, we have a support plan, usually the first week, to see what the kind of service they want. Do they want legal services, psychological services, as well as psych counselor, or do they want only a shelter right now because they don't have any places to stay and they're facing some issues. So once we develop that plan, the support plan, then we set up a weekly meeting counseling and case management session in order to see the ongoing process, how they're doing. Because according to their meeting with the counselor and they're having the counselor session and also the weekend admission oriented by the house mother is there. So we are going through their direction, now I'm going there, but at the same time, the weekend admission orientation by house mother. Why? Because the staff are not in the foundation, but we do meet them and if they have any question, usually they meet with the client. Then, in terms of the services that cover all kinds of services, the casework, what kind of cases there are, what they have, what is the aftercare planning? Do they need to be only in foundation because they want, they're facing them just legal issues or they have other areas which need to be covered? And then we see the case resolution. Are we are, the goal we have been implemented from the beginning, I mean, we have set the goals. Are they being implemented by the patient as well as by the case managers or the psychologists. Because a lot of time what we face, we try to go to certain goals and we can do it as much as we can, especially with the human trafficking cases. Because they come through the 
police department, and it's very difficult also when you are working, you know, with th three different, you're working with the court, you're working with the prosecution office, you're working with the, you know, with our department, and most cases they wanna leave the foundation as soon as they can. Why? Because they say we can't stay here, and if I stay here, you know, I just am gonna miss my family. That's why we provide services that are in contact with families in their country of origin. A lot of people we have from Bangladesh, from Russia, from India, from Philippines, from Dubai, everywhere, you know, all you can mention is we do have such population. So we have a weekly call for the client, they call international call, which is in Tuesday, they're in contact with their families to see what we can do. And also when we face such issue, we call the consulate in order to come meet us to provide us. And then after that, we have the exit plan, and then we have a 30 to 90 days to 180 days follow up. Now, when we say about three and 90 and 80 days, what, when they are at shelter, according to the shelter, usually we have 90 days, but that does not mean we're gonna tell the client leave. Some of the clients stayed for even a year, two years. We are very flexible, because our goal to protect them. And then once they are ready to leave, then we follow up. Now, the case is different. If somebody here in town, we usually we go, sorry, you're three here, I've been neglecting you. <laughs> So when we are here, you know, we talk to them. So you're going to country of origin even there. We have some of the staff, or we had in the past, I mean, they accompanied client to the Sweden. We found a shelter for them because they didn't want to go back to their family because it was a human trafficking case by their family member, by the father. A lot of cases here, they come, I'm gonna give you an example, for example, once they leave, we get a call, for example, from human rights in the police department. The case has been calling us from the airport. While, you know, the father has escort, tried to escort him to go back for the purpose of abuse or certain like human trafficking, they call us, they say, our father is trying to do this to us, please can you help us? So they come back to us. So that's why in such cases, we are not gonna leave them to go by themselves. We have a case manager with the free ticket and everything. They go with them, accompany to their own, to that country, and it depends where they choose. Some of the clients said, I don't want to Sweden because I have some family members. I might be, again, a victim. So I want to go to different cities, and sometimes also we also in contact with US. And ag again, we are working as a colleague and as a collaboration together in order to provide such services. So that's why we follow up and to see if they're doing well. And if there's such issue, we always give them our number, they can always contact, because we have a re-entry service as well. And then they return to the community, for the, uh, then they uh, report, uh, you know, report creation to country of origin, which I've talked about. Now, this case is a little bit different, of course, human trafficking than a domestic violence. A lot of cases when we have from domestic violence, you know, with the issue or neglect of children, they will resign in the foundation. We do help those families even sometimes uh, in terms of financially. We are not direct providing for external housing, but we have other areas as a donation, they donate, we have a donation place. You know, people can donate, and we also, with uh, different agencies here in the country, people are really, you know, willing, they bring from their zakat, you know, and everything they give to us, and we are really monitoring those, because we are very restrict about those money, where it's going, is this really going to the right places or not? So we have a differentiate between sadaq, sadaq and zakat, to see who needs it, and then some of the staff, we do also prefer the housing for them, you know, sometimes we also accompany by client to their house to see if they're safe. And a lot of time also by CDA, we have a support with them also. They provide some housing for us, for Sheikh Mohammed al Iskandi also if the, our clients need the services. So again, for each population, it depends on their problem. Okay, the primary support services. We providing, as I said, free services to women and children and victims of doing that. As you see, you know, before I cover this, which is we have a safe shelter, we have a case management, we have a medical care. The medical care, now when we talk about, sorry, safe shelter, we do have the housing, the food and everything is buffet. You know, we have morning, lunch, afternoon, a snack and dinner, and open a snack anytime they want. They can ask for that. But right now we just moved to a new villa, it's really well furnished. Each parents, they have, you know, their own room with their children. We try also to accommodate as much as we can in order to provide them. Even we did a split unit for the each case, so they cannot, you know, complain about each other. I am cold, I'm, you know, hot. So that's why. So in terms of the medical care, we are, 
uh, in conjunct with the DHA, we provide the services, free services. This, again, I mean only for internal cases, not for external cases. As long as they are staying in the foundation, they have free. If they have surgery, if they have any appointment, they go directly with the case manager to the hospital and they provide services, again, free of charge. However, in some cases, we have provided such services for external clients. Because I, excuse me again. Excuse me. We look at those populations to see if they really need that services or not. We have to meet as a team to evaluate the case to see if they're really eligible for such thing or not. In terms of counseling and psychological support, once they come to know, the, usually by the counselor, it's an ongoing process. For psychological services, we don't force them, but in some cases we have provided, in some cases we did not. We said it's severe cases, some of the same, they need more psychological services, some of the cases, but again, the door is open to all of them. Providing uh, legal and counsel immigration assistance. Again, we have two legal assistants at the foundation, free of charge. They come, they face such issue. The woman come to the foundation, they said, no, I will lose my child. That cannot, that's why I cannot defend myself. She's thinking because her children are under the age, they, she will lose it automatically or whatever. But we try to help them to understand, no, as long as your children is an immediate ginger, you're not gonna lose the children. Second, if the children are under age of 12, a female, they're not gonna lose the children. So we, are, we do psycho-educational you know, classes for parents, for everybody in the foundation in order to know what are the rights. Can they lose you know, the legal? And then again, they go escort them to the court. We have also special staff who accompany the client to the court, to the prosecution, and it's gonna be an ongoing process. Providing the helpline. The helpline is, as I said, at 24 hours. They get the call, they transfer the call to the us, and we take the client, we call them. We see what the service need is. Sometimes they say, okay, we just need psychological service. We will give them that. Sometimes they say, no, we just need only case management. And sometimes they say, we just want to get some consultation, and we don't know which place to go. We refer them to the places where they want to go. Again, we see what is the specific need of each client. Providing community awareness services that include educational activity in school, universities, and institution. Part of our services is provide services in the community, in the university, in any place in our order. Even we go to Hatta, we go to Abu Dhabi, we go anywhere if they ask us. We work with the schools, you know, even sometimes we get calls, we just transfer the call without knowing who they are. But we do. Like, for example, I met one of the counselors today at school. I met her through, I didn't know her, but somebody at why she said we need some awareness in the school about child abuse. I said, okay, give me this, you know, the number we will contact. And today somebody, you know, Mrs. Ihsan, she just told me, oh, I know you. I said, I haven't met you. She said, I am the one who was referred by such parents. So this is the coincidence how this happened. You know, I just now found out she is the person. And I thought they never contacted us. No, she contacted us. But it was dependent on the cases. Okay, the secondary support is education, educating children residing in the foundation okay, who those accompany their mothers. Some kids, when they come to the foundation, they have been neglected, they did never attended the school, they might be at age five or years, some of them, they do not even speak a word because of the neglect, because the father has neglected it. We go, even we had, you know, a case which where they don't have passport. The kids has been with the mother without any passport, without any support. So we do provide those, those services. And when I say it, I really mean it. You know, we have done that, and as well as trying to educate them. We work also with the Ministry of Education. They go back to the school, and we have a driver in the foundation. They accompany with the nurse. We don't leave the children alone with the driver. We have a driver every morning, drop the children, and we have a specific driver just for that. He goes in the morning, and he comes in the afternoon to pick up the kids from the school. So also those are about the education of the children. And again, once they are in the foundation, it's free, and I think as long as they are facing those issues, it's gonna be continued. Recreational activities. We have different activities in the foundation. We have, like, for example, um, um, you know, uh, drawing, uh, craft, uh, English and some cooking class. We do have also, you know, sometimes uh, services were outside where they could do self care for the client in terms of skin care, anything. We get any services from other departments we do provide. We see who really needs it, who are really willing to go, and we never force our client. 
So in terms of recreational activity, we take them outside. The children, they go, for example, to Chiki, you know, uh, monkeys, and they go spend time with the house mothers. They, we bring them back. And also sometimes we bring people from outside for the parties, for the international day parties, for their own parties, which is at Christmas, anything. We also celebrate what they want, their birthday, anything. The clients since feel like they want to do it. We ask them what they call. Need. In addition, the physical fitness they do have, we bring people from outside who can, you know, train them for yoga, who can do exercises, and again, we cover uh, such thing. Empowerment and skill training. We have a group which we meet with them on a weekly basis for empowerment and skills, and uh, you know how to prevent abuse and how to work on the parenting skill as well as personal skills. Community awareness. Okay, any question? We can take some question if you would like to before we go to this section. Okay. What languages are the language we do speak. For example, we have uh, English, Arabic. Some staff speak a little bit of Urdu. And um, if we lack the language, like for example, you know, Bangladesh, Russia, we don't speak, you know, we have people who are a translator, they come to expect. In such cases, we do not provide the counseling, but we do a company, we call them, right, right then, if they are facing some issue, they call the police department, they come as a translator. And sometimes also we are in the, with the agency, the embassies. They come to consulate and provide. But overall, we have, you know, for example, I personally I speak three languages, so I used to work with them. So it depends. Uh, in terms of community awareness, now this is might be interested to you guys today since you are all here about KHDA. First, when we see, we assess the needs, when we are talking about, we are talking about any organization in the country. You, for example, come at the school, you tell me, I want this. We evaluate, okay, we see. Before we setting the goals and objectives, we'll see if this is really, for example, such issue is gonna be beneficial or why your target. We'll try to go to the directions we really mo mostly connected to our area, which is domestic violence, child abuse, human trafficking. For example, the school come to us and told us we want a presentation about sexual harassment. And we did provide that. Now they said, okay, now we want for boys. Sexual harassment. Okay, I work on that. I have done that. So if you come to the foundation, you say I need such services. We assess the needs, then we set up the goals and objection, and we develop an intervention, and then we implement the intervention and evaluate the result according to our experience on our research to see if this such thing you really need it. And that's why it's an ongoing process. Our services for the it's a training program and workshop, childhood protection campaign, and publication. First, we go, okay, the training program and workshop for the students, for parents, and the school staff. Each school, they're gonna call us. We want a presentation for, for example, for children. It has been mostly, to be honest with you, for children, because that's why our aim right now, uh, you know, on target. In some cases, they came, they ask for parents. We do that as well. For teachers, if they want to see how to protect the children, how to do the community awareness, what they can do in order to be in contact with us. What is the procedure they face? So we do provide such program. A student workshop. Now, a student workshop we have for four to seven, then seven to 12, and for the high school. Today, somebody outside asked me if we provide. We said, yeah, they didn't have an idea for that. So, and we have, these are the workshop, like right now we are, you know, for the, which when we came to the foundation, we didn't have any of this, you know, at the beginning. Like when I worked for, this was from last, to the, you know, two years we are trying good touches, good and bad touches, and you saw the brochure, you know, those are part of our publication. You know, good and bad touches, our words, our choice, you are a princess with an Arabic anti-Amira, and also my community rights, and how to protect yourself from abuse. These are the area we cover, because we have a, student, we have a campaign every uh, April, I think March and April, we have and also in the malls, and we do, awareness. The parents lecture, we target this area, which is child abuse, indicators and red flags, domestic violence, and children rights for, from social and psychological perspective. For the school staff, it's about child abuse indicator, red flag, and children rights from social and psychological perspective, and annual training program for social workers. Mostly that was for the government, 
uh, you know, partnership, and also we are working towards some, you know, private areas as well. The publication and media, we have the children and booklet. If you pass by our booth, you saw we have on those, which we have passed to uh, people. And if you didn't stop, please feel free to stop by and take some of those so you can have an idea about what I'm talking about. Domestic violence brochure also, we, and right now also we have also child abuse brochure and we have some radio skip, which I don't know if some of you guys hear about that. It comes in the radios talking about how the family role should be and what's going on that what's considered an abuse or not because a lot of people they don't have an idea what's an abuse is most of the people when we they talk about abuse they talk about psychological uh, sorry about uh, physical abuse instead of emotion and even i had somebody stop them you know booth that she asked me physical abuse is not okay but what do you mean by verbal abuse well he can you know he can you know say anything bad to me and then you know i can just let go he will he was mad i said it depends on the severity and for how long has this going. Then I asked her, I said, are you married? The reason I asked her this question, because I thought maybe because it's still, you know, because some relationship issue comes more to the people who are experienced. And then she said, no, I'm not. I said, okay, let me ask you this question. If you're married, your husband hit you. You might find the scar that will go away, right? And that's why you think it's there. That's why it's more obvious. But if he told you every day you're stupid for a year, at the end you're gonna believe you're stupid. Same thing for the children. If the children has been in the school, you know, they tell them, you are stupid. We had some children, like, really complain. You know, they tell them, okay, this is not a brain. This is a cantaloupe. The child come to the house, they say, mom, I don't have a brain. This is a cantaloupe. You know, even until these days, this is going on. So I think the reason behind this is just because people are not aware of this. In our community, even probably my parents are not aware of it. Sometimes I get attacked, you know, what you're talking, this is not an abuse. So children need rights. Some people, they think, what we can do with children? So most of our role is to educate people. And for our contact, you know, they can call our helpline as 800 one and those are the telephone, the fax. Email info at defog.ae can be any time. We take that email. And we, it goes connected to the helpline and they transfer to us. And sometimes the cases are scared to contact us. They send email because the husband might be, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't mean to attack men mostly, you know, because those are the, it's a male power thing, you usually know, or also some of the children. Let's take it that way so I won't come across it all talking about men being abusive. So the children are scared to contact us because of the family, they send an email. Then we contact with them. Sometimes we go through the police department and we have also, you can follow us on our first book, and sometimes we have some tips on Twitter. So thank you. This is, you know, what uh, services we can provide, and we will open to the discussion. And if you like, you can ask in Arabic, and it's, uh, you know, whatever feels comfortable. Go ahead. It depends. It depends. If the child is under age, according to the law, if the child is under age of 18, yes, we have to report. Before the law, as you said, right now, it's an ongoing service, right? Before Wadima law, we'd, nobody were talking about such law. Now, since it's more open, we do. In the, in the past, we were thinking about or to report, but the problem if you report, you are not protected. But right now, we took that protection from the police. They will accompany us, we will report. If I have a cases from the school, the school call me, for example, this client is at home. We call the police, we go together, basically vice versa, we support each other. But if it's above 18, according to the law, children, you are not obligated to report because they are not children. This is like international, you know, child abuse law. In terms of parent, uh, if the child is, uh, they called in and their abuse, the father doesn't know, the mother brought, if he has the custody, we have to inform the father, like your children are in the foundation, because we had faced problem in the past, why you don't tell us, you know? It depends, you wanna protect, according to the children rule, you have to, so some family, they wanna just to attack you, you are attacking me, for example, he says you are defending my wife. So our role is just to report. Between? Actually, if anything happens inside the school, 
Okay. In between two lines. It's not uh, really a crime, but it may be in a different form. So it, how uh, how uh, these institutions uh, taking care of that? Yes, that's we call it school bullying, for example, between children and the school. Our role is just to give some presentation and the school will contact us because they are facing some problem in the school about the school bullying. If such cases happen, we go provide the lecture. If they call us, it's how much the school are involved in that. Because what happened with respect, this is not only about the school. This is also about anybody, families, anybody. There is a shame of guilt in everywhere. They don't want to talk about that. They say, no, we are fine. We don't have an abuse in the school. But we know there is. So if something in the school, the school wants to contact us, they think it's, it's a sexual abuse between the children, and yes, you have to report to us because this is a more severe cases. But if it's a bullying, it's more like behavioral problem. So we have to identify what we are talking. It's a psychological behavior. It's more, you know, severe cases. So again, your role should be with us also to see can we provide the services by the school not hiding from us. Is that clear enough? Yes. Okay, let me explain that a little bit more clear. For example, if you are providing for a staff, the driver is part of the staff, right? So that's the first step. The second step, we're talking about neighbor. For example, if that neighbor, their children is in your school, then you're providing the services for the parents, she will come. But if she's in a different housing, or her children is in different school, so you are not going to be able to provide such thing for the neighbors. It depends if they're on, the school are being involved. If you think about it differently, so many people are unaware of what is abuse. And again, as much as you do this educational, if you do for parenting, probably she is going to hear it. So most likely, if that person in that community, in that neighborhood, her children will be in that, that's that probably that's going to be spreading the word again to the other people. So again, you can provide that, and that's our role to come. You just call us, tell us, okay, we need, for example, presentation for parents, for teacher. Oh, okay, just for Nani, I would recommend, to be honest with you, we had some people who has came to us, they wanted to, uh, not because they come with their nannies, they shouldn't, okay, you should, if you do for nannies, they might come. We do in that situation a little bit after school, like not at 12, at 11, because the mother said, I'm gonna be at work, I can't come. So you will do it from one to two, we will do it two to three. Because we wanna, our main goal is to, t you know, to target the population. So if you request that, we will do. And also for nannies, your driver, but unfortunately, I don't want to say, but this is shame. For us to think about, we are going to give lecture to the nannies, where are the fathers, where are the mothers? You know, even we work, that doesn't mean we have to prevent. So maybe that's one of your rules, is just to give the sheet to the nannies when they go to the house, to the, you know, pick up the children and put in the book, please, this is, put a red flag. When you put a red flag, like highlight there, important, your child in danger, please come attend this. We want to protect you. We want to provide service. Such thing is going to hurt. That's why we talked about the red flag. Especially this population, now they're more aware of this. So I appreciate your, you know, your input. That's really important. Um, what is the right age to um, speak about child abuse to a child? Like, for example, if it's a five-year-old or a six-year-old, they can happen to speak to them. I mean, most of the children, they not Actually, children, no. That's one of the thing, you know, for example, when you talk about good touches, but bad touches, that's to help them awareness because it depends on the age. That's why we, 
have divided the ages according to, you know, what is the subject can be talked about and what we can open more openly to the children. A lot of people, they think like children cannot know. They do know about this. Especially sometimes they watch movie, they watch on internet. For example, the other day I was talking to my child because you know, this new generation, when you give them an iPad, they go online and they just like bring the YouTube. And I brought this like, you know, with my colleague we were just talking, we found this one on the internet about computer, safety of the computer. And we just is about the drawing and about doing things together. And suddenly, okay, click number one, and it was given educational system to the child. When you go through this computer, gradually we're gonna take. And one is come, this one pop in the computer. Please tell to your parents. Once the kids they watch this, they're gonna be aware. Okay, why I am telling. And the second step is when you talk about this child abuse and children doesn't know. Children watch a lot of movies. If you think about any movies right now. Unfortunately, there is some sexual, you know, thing inside of it. Even Lego, I, I watched with my daughter this weekend, I told my husband, even the Lego, you know, the Lego, they have a book at the end, there is a kiss and everything. So children watch this, and they try to apply it with each other without knowing this is an abuse. And it can be, so once you educate them, it's about, my daughter is like almost, is gonna be seven, I'm teaching her, grad every day, this is a private area, this is good touch, this is who are allowed to touch, who are not allowed to touch. So, still they know. Any question? Lafu. Should I answer in Arabic or English? <laughs> in Arabic, it's okay. بالنسبة للمحاضرة فعلًا نحن عنا بالمدارس. لما أنا تكلمت عن good touches, bad touches, ونحن للصف نتكلم بالعربي. ها رقم واحد. إذا طلبوا مت عنا في المدارس الحكومية ونفس الشيء في المدارس الخاصة. بالنسبة لتوعية المدارس يمكن لأن أنا مو في الكوميونيتي أورنس فهم هذا شغلهم نحن أربع كل شهر عندنا محاضرة حاليا على مدار هالسنة مثلا أنا حاطة محاضرة شهريا يعني نحن عندنا 15 ستاف أوكي كل وحدة فينا يا ست حاضر في مدرسة يعني أنا هالأسبوع هني والأسبوع اللي في مدرسة الأسبوع اللي بعدين في مدرسة الأسبوع اللي عقبة بكون في ملقوين ف يوم عن يوم مثل ما تقول الحين زادت التوعيه فالناس صاروا يسمعون، نحن عم بنحظر في المدارس، بس المشكله الناس ما يسمعون لان حتى في الكي دي مثلا نروح الار تي اي صرنا، البلديه صرنا، ال ايفريوير، سو اي واز توكينج ابوت وي ار جوينج تو ايفريوير، تو سكول ايفري مانث، اند وي ار جوينج اولسو تو يو نو تو مونسيباليتي تو يو نو اني يو نو اورجنايزيشن وي ار ثينكينج وي دو بروفايد على ما اعتقد هناك كان قبل؟ She was, she was talking about like she has been working with us for four years, so we always go to their school to present. Naam? Free, killa free. Allah katr al ek al hukuma, yani hum tr, yani hum khad minu nihna khafim tko. أكيد طبعاً فهذه هنا جهاتكم شو أنتوا تتصلون في المؤسسة وتقولوا نحن نبغي عن توعية المدارس الأخة روضة هي اليوم مو موجودة فعلى طول في أي مؤسسة تتصلون 800 تربل 1 وتقولوا نحن نبغي محاضرة بهالعنوان هم نحن على طول نحن بنوجهكم أو تطرشون إيميل على طول هم يحاولون يعني هالإيميل مو بشرط مو بشرط حق الأبيوس حق أي شيء أنتوا تبون على طول تتصلون 
يعني هو ال provide نعم ال السوشيال ادكيشن والله نحن مو يعني ما نوفر في هالمجال بس محاضرات حق المدرسات على اساس الابيوز بلا يعني ممكن اوكي يعني طبعا ما سايكولوجيكال سيرفيسز فور ذا تشيلدرن لا خدمات نفسيه حق الطفل ما نو. لما اذا في ممكن نحن نسوي البريفنشن نقول لهم وين الجهه المخصصه ممكن تودون شو واز توكينج اباوت سبيشال ادكيشن تشيلدرن وي دو برفايد سيرفيس ان تيرمز اوف ادكيشنال فور ذا تيشر فور ذا سكول بات وي دونت برفايد ذا سيرفيسز فور سيرش كيدز بات وي دو اس ذيم تو كول اس اند ذن وي ترانسفير تو ذا ايجنت هو سبيشاليز فور اكزامبل اف سمبدي تيل مي اي هاف ا تشايلد وذ سبيشال ادكيشن او سيل فور اكزامبل يعني على قصدي اللي كانت في طفله مثلا سيكشولي ابيوز من uh, على ما اعتقد من حد من الاهل اقارب وكان سبيشال ادكيشن فانا اتعاملت بروحي ما خليت الطفل انه في المؤسسه ما نقبل اذا ما يعني انا مو تخصصي سبيشال ادكيشن عرفتي يعني هذه بعد من صميم عملي ان انا شيء متخصصه فيه ما اخذ لان اي ونت ريسبكت كلاينت فانا خذيت على طول حاولت بروحي دورت على الدكتور ووجهت الاهل This one, yes. She was talking about the special education. If we have a child who are being abused, or the parent or the school staff that are working, I said, although it's not my specialty of you know in special education, we try our best to provide the service by contacting other agencies to see who can. If we have a government agency or if we have a private, if the family said, okay, I cannot stay in the line for six months, for example, to get such services, then. I found myself sometimes because of some of the colleagues I know who are working in such areas, so we do transfer them. But for the parents, uh, for the school staff, sorry, if they need services about general abuse, because abuse applies to everybody, you know, even like my, you know, uh, minors and uh, you know above age, so we do that. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.